Hey, I'm Joel Klatt, and here are my top five quarterbacks for this year's 2019 NFL Draft. Let's start with number five. At number five, I'm going to go with Will Greer. Now, he's a guy that's not cracking a lot of top five lists, but Will Greer is going to be on my top five list for a very simple reason. Against his toughest opponents, he played his best football. That's what you've got to do at the next level. He's also a guy that has a lot of maturity. He's been got, he's gotten that maturity from his time at Florida, then moving to West Virginia and playing under Dana Holgerson. He was terrific against Texas on the road, bringing him back late, ultimately winning that game. He was terrific against Oklahoma, even in a loss. Those are really his two toughest opponents. The one thing he's got to work on, though, he tends to wait for the home run rather than just taking what's in front of him. Because of that, he's taken too many sacks and he's put his team in some bad positions. If he can curb that mentality, which I think is more from a coaching standpoint, then I think he's going to work out at the next level. At number four, I'm going to go with the Missouri quarterback, Drew Locke. Now, I really struggled with whether Will Greer should be at four and Locke should be at five. But for me, Locke is going to go to four because of his arm talent. Listen, he's got a terrific arm very Stafford-esque, if you will, a guy that can really sling it. His problem comes when he relies on that too much. He loves to drive the ball and throw his fastball rather than winning with touch. At the next level, you're gonna have to win with touch. It's called a layered pass over the linebackers in front of the safeties. You have to layer that ball in those intermediate zones and into those intermediate windows. He's gotta learn how to do that if he's gonna have success at the next level. At number three is the Duke quarterback, Daniel Jones. Now, Daniel Jones has the quote-unquote coaching bloodlines. Remember, the Manning brothers played for Cutcliffe. Now, all of a sudden, you've got Daniel Jones playing for Cutcliffe at Duke. That's going to help him out immensely as we move forward into this process. He understands the schematics. He understands how to work in the pocket, and I think that's his best trait. Very similar to the Mannings as they got into the NFL. They were comfortable in the pocket in the midst of chaos, and I think Daniel does that uh, with spades. He does have a requisite arm. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but he wins with touch, which I think is more important than the ability to throw a big fastball. So Daniel Jones is number three for me. And now for my top two, who are separated from the rest by a wide margin. And I'll start with number two. Dwayne Haskins is the quarterback at Ohio State. What a tremendous year he had. And I think the finish to his year was even better than people want to give him credit for. In the middle of the season, he tended to struggle a little bit, in particular with his footwork. He got a little wonky in those areas, and because of that, his accuracy wasn't that great. Now, during the end of the season, that stretch run, he played some of the best football of any quarterback in the country, in particular against Michigan, um, Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship game, in the Rose Bowl against Washington, and those were all defenses that posed pretty formidable challenges in their own way. The man coverage from Michigan, the tight zone from Northwestern, and then Washington was just one of the best pass defenses that we've got in the country. I think at Dwayne's best, he could be a Matt Ryan caliber quarterback, a tall guy that can sit in the pocket and make all the throws. But again, he needs to develop that footwork to do that. Now, Dwayne is a immense talent. His arm is terrific. What he will need to develop is his footwork in the pocket. When that wasn't there, he tried to win with his arm and the ball lagged a little bit sailing downward. When he's got his footwork in concert with his upper body, there was none better. He's a project, probably needs to sit for a year. I think this guy does that and his ceiling might be the highest of any quarterback in this draft. And my number one quarterback in this draft is Kyler Murray from Oklahoma. This guy has such a rare combination of passing acumen and efficiency with the ability to make plays with his feet. I've never seen anybody with this style of combination. We've seen Michael Vick in the past, and it was so rare at that point to have a guy that could throw the football as well as Michael Vick and be as explosive of a runner. But I'm here to tell you, Murray's both more efficient as a passer than Vick was coming out of Virginia Tech, and he's more efficient as a runner than Vick was coming out of Virginia Tech. If you looked at Vic while he was with the Hokies, what you saw was a guy with a big, strong arm that just used his athleticism to get out of trouble when he needed it. When you look at Murray, you see a guy that was over a yard better than Vic on a yards per carry basis and was much better from a completion percentage perspective and touchdown to interception ratio perspective. All of that lends itself to success at the next level. I think Murray is going to find himself in a great situation in the NFL, probably with Arizona. And I think he's going to have a really bright future. 
He's the quarterback that you take if you want to be better next week. He makes the team better right now because of that combination I was talking about, his passing acumen and his ability to make plays with his feet. We have never, I repeat, never seen anybody like Kyler Murray in the NFL. There is one red flag with Kyler Murray. One. His size. Last time I checked, I saw a Super Bowl get won by a quarterback that was 5'10". That was when Russell Wilson beat the Denver Broncos. I've seen now Drew Brees start to erase every record in the NFL record book, and this guy is barely over six foot tall. Baker Mayfield, barely over six foot tall, has tremendous success. Patrick Mahomes is not a tall guy. And shouldn't it be more about your production? Shouldn't it be more about how many passes are batted down at the line of scrimmage? Let's take a look at that. Of these five guys that I've mentioned in this video, you know that the two at the top are the ones that had the least amount of passes batted down at the line of scrimmage? Only five from Dwayne Haskins and Kyler Murray. Five. So you tell me if his height is an issue, because I don't think it is.